So in this video, we'll do another practice problem on solving a linear system by the use of the Gaussian elimination. And as usual, we'll try to make the three numbers which are all below the diagonal from top left to the bottom right on the left hand side of um, the system be zero, right? So uh, now, um, I hope you observe something here. The fact is that, for example, to make this one zero by the row one, the fact is you have to do something, row two and row one, um, we have to do some row operations on that. And to make it zero, I think we have to choose minus two times four, right? For the number eight. So it means that we will try to write down the next step by the row operations. The first operation we need is uh, row two minus two times row one. That's the way to update the row two. And anyway, the row one is unchanged. But for the row two, we have to do something like that. And we understand that for the first bot, it's going to be zero. And surprisingly, all of these are also zero. Why? Because, for example, like the second number, uh, row two minus two times row one, which is one, is again zero. And similarly, for the 10 here, you see 10 minus two times five is going to be zero, right? All of these are zero. How about the last number on the right hand side? It's still zero again because it's like four, row two minus two times two, right? It is zero. So um, it means we have a row which is totally zero. And based on the last video, you should understand that when you have a row which is zero equals zero, uh, it means um, it is correct. Zero, of course, is equal to zero, but it doesn't carry any extra information for us to solve the system. But anyway, let's do the row three now. And we have to try to use row one now to, uh, to make the first bot on the row three zero. I think it's obvious because um, both numbers are the same, right? Uh, just a change of sign, basically. So uh, minus four with something in four, we have to make it zero. I think the fact is we have to add them to make them zero. So I'm doing row three plus row one. And similarly, I can do minus one plus one for the first number here in row one, it's going to be zero. And similarly, all of these are zero, actually. So if you look at the row one and row three more carefully, the only difference is that row three has a sign change at each term from the row one. Please look at them. So basically, row three is the same as minus row one, if that. So that's the reason why when you do row three plus row one, it's going to be a zero row. Now, what does it mean? Zero equals zero, once again, uh, it doesn't make the system inconsistent. It just carries no information on the system. It means that now we are left with only one meaningful equation, which is row one. So it means what? It means now you have uh, three unknowns, which are x, y, z, but you have only one equation, right? So uh, you don't have enough equation to determine all the unknowns. It gives us a sense that um, it should be a system which has infinitely many solutions. Let's write it down here. And because it's a system with infinitely many solutions, based on the fact that you don't have enough number of equations to solve for all the unknowns, we can use some parametric forms to write all the solutions down. For example, like with the last variable, we can set z be t. But uh, only one parameter is not enough because um, after using this parameter, I think uh, we are still left with two unknowns with one equation, right? So, so it means that we have to let either x or y be a second parameter. Let's say we have to set y be s. So in that case, we have a equation for x plus s plus five times t equals two. You see, uh, this one is y, this one is basically z. Basically, uh, x is what? x is two minus s minus five t divided by four, right? So it means uh, I write the solutions down now. Basically, we can write it as uh, y is s and z is t and x is basically a big one. Um, this system means what? This system basically means you need uh, two parameters, S and T, to write all the solutions down. And obviously, S and T can take any real values. It means uh, this system has infinitely many solutions. So that's the end of this video.